Here is Montegrappa Slytherin. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The paper I'm using here is a Moramon Nemesine notebook. It's a nice green that's well behaved. It gives tone variation by pen and even manages to shade some pretty well, though not as much as my preference for a green ink. But none of that is the real point of this ink. This ink is really meant to appeal to the Harry Potter fans out there using fountain pens. Now, while I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan, I do think that Harry Potter fans would be well served and very happy using this ink, especially if they sat there and said, well, from what I saw in the movies, at least me. Malfoy always seemed to be a victim of his father, so you can hate him for being Slytherin, but he was a victim in that story. What I saw of the movies, not interested in the books. I think the ink would be worth the cost for the added fun for those Harry Potter fans out there. The pen for today is a Duke 209. All of the writing samples are done with a Platinum 3776 with a soft fine nib which writes rather dry. A Hero 7035 with a fine nib that writes wet. A Visconti Van Gogh with a medium nib and an average flow. A Lamy Safari with a broad nib that writes average. Now that we know my opinion on this ink, let's see how I got there starting with the first writing sample done on Clairefontaine. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is a very light green that is still incredibly easy to read on the page, even though it's much lighter. It does not feather, does not spread. It does shade fairly well from this soft fine. Look at the name Balin. Look at at your service. Every single word has shading really coming through in it, and I think really does give a nice character to it. I'm probably making a copy of the wrong book considering that I came to this but I didn't feel like buying a copy of a Harry Potter book to do this, so we're staying with The Hobbit. Looking at the wet fine, as we would expect, it is much darker than it was with the soft fine. It does not feather. It does not spread. It does shade some. It's just that what's going down is much darker. So take a look at the correct on the first line, and you can see is the is much darker than the beginning of correct. And even when you move down to the second line, the word but has some shading in it. That's right. It's but shade. Looking at the medium tip nib, tib, nib, that thing, tip, you know, the nib, the righty bit. The tone that we're getting here is really, really a great green, entirely different of the other tones. And while it's lighter than we got with the wet fine and darker than the soft fine, it is its own tone on the page that does not feather does not spread, does shade not as well as it did with the soft fine. I think the soft fine was set up pretty well to bring that out, though normally it exposes weakness. The medium is looking great. Looking at the broad nib, it is lighter than it was with the medium, lighter or sorry, darker than it was with the medium, geez, words today. Darker than it was with the medium, lighter than it was with the wet fine. It is still its own tone. We get four different tones, noticeably different tones from this ink on the page. Now the broad is not feathering or spreading. It is shading much better than it did with the medium, though it is a darker tone in what's happening. So we get darker mid to much darker tones. Looking at the back of the page, you see that we get no bleeding, no ghosting, no problem writing back here. Like most inks, this one comes in a bottle. 
This is how the Pilot Custom 823 fits. And here is the Pelican M1000. Here is the ink level when you can no longer fill a Lamy Safari. There is approximately 3 milliliters of ink left. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, we get right about the same tone that we had on the Clairefontaine. It does not feather, does not spread, it does shade and is doing it well, though not as well as it did on the Clairefontaine. This ink is looking very nice on this page. I think it's a good combination we have here, especially considering non-fountain pen friendly paper. When we see it working well, and I really do like these reporter notebooks, it's always especially nice. Looking at the wet fine nib, quite a bit darker than we had with the soft fine, a little bit darker, just a tad bit darker than it was on the Clairefontaine. It's not feathering, it's not spreading, it is shading. Look at the second line specifically. Have starts darker, gets lighter, gets dark again. Some is lighter than the words above it. Same with T going dark to light. So the shading is coming through very nicely if you want your green ink shading, which I do. Looking at the medium nib, we get the same great tone that we had on the Clairefontaine. Still lighter than we had with the wet fine, as we would expect. It does not feather, it does not spread. There's going to be a moment where things look a little wonky, and that was me, not the ink pen or paper. I like what we're seeing for shading. It's definitely coming through. I would like to see more. It's the color that I'm getting here that I think really makes this stand out beautifully. Looking at the broad nib, it is darker than we had with the medium. It is a little lighter than we had on the Clairefontaine, noticeably lighter than the Clairefontaine. Now, it is not feathering. It is not spreading. It is giving some shading. You do see some much darker areas in the dark letters, like look at the D in said, the beginning of the B in Balin, or the H in with. So it can shade even with the broad nib on this paper. Such a good paper. Looking at the back of the page, you see that we get minimal ghosting. You could write back here if you wanted to. Nothing bled through and touched the page underneath. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. The one on the right, marked with a D, is let dry for 10 minutes before putting it into water. The next writing sample is done on a national brand Steno notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, this is a very different green than we were getting on the Clairefontaine, obviously because of the paper, but I think this tone of the paper is really giving this ink a real pop in its color. It's really getting it to look amazing. It looked good before. It looks really amazing now. It's not feathering. It's not spreading. It is shading incredibly well. Every single word has much darker parts to it, which I always appreciate seeing in any of the writing. Looking at the wet fine nib, much darker than it was with the soft fine, a little bit darker than it was on the Clairefontaine. It is not feathering, it is not spreading, it is not shading, just a very dark green here. Looking at the medium nib, it is a little bit lighter than we had on the Clairefontaine, quite a bit lighter than we had with the Soft Fine, which is a little lighter, or sorry, a little darker than it was, I said quite a bit lighter than it was with the Wet Fine. <laughs> 
little bit darker than it was with the soft fine. It is not feathering. It is not spreading. It is shading just a little bit. Really, you only get to get little bits of shading that do show up, but it's not real consistent, not real standout in what it's doing. The color's great. The performance could do a little better. Looking at the broad nib, it is lighter than we had on the Clairefontaine, still darker than we had on the medium here on this paper. I think the color here looks better than it did on the Clairefontaine from the broad. It's not feathering. It's not spreading. It is shading some, but nowhere near as much as it did on the Clairefontaine. Still not a paper made for fountain pens, even though I think it works really well. I kind of wish they made this paper as a white, not just as its toned version. Looking at the back of the page, you can see that there is some slight ghosting, especially on the wet fine, but I think you could write back here if you wanted to, especially with the soft fine and the medium. Nothing bled through touching the page underneath, even these spots of the so with the wet fine that looked like they were getting a little bit deeper. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The highlighter is on the top left. Pen flush is on the top right. One third bleach solution is on the bottom left. And water is on the bottom right. The next writing sample is done in a Rhodia notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is a tad bit darker than we had on the Clairefontaine. It does not feather, does not spread, it shades, shades very well. I do think the Clairefontaine showed the shading a little bit better than what we're getting here, but maybe some of the shading is being hidden by the fact that I'm writing on quad rule paper at this moment. It means it's something to keep track of as what type of paper you use in how it might affect the way you see it. Looking at the wet fine nib, it is just a tad bit lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine, still quite a bit darker than it was with a soft fine nib. It does not feather. It does not spread. It does not shade. We had a little bit of shading coming through on the Clairefontaine, but not really here. It's much more uniform in tone. Though it's very nice, it is a very dark green that we're getting from a wet nib. Looking at the medium nib, we get the same tone that we had on the Clairefontaine, still quite a bit lighter than we had with the wet fine on this paper. It's not feathering, not spreading, it is shading. Not, it shades just a little bit less frequently than it did on the Clairefontaine, though it is still shading very well. Same comment, I would prefer more shading from my greens, but I think the tone here is looking fantastic. Looking at the broad nib, it is a little lighter than we had on the Clairefontaine. When they're side by side, it's noticeable. If they're not side by side, you would think they're the same. It does not feather, it does not spread. With it being just a tad bit lighter, it does shade quite a bit more noticeably. I don't want to say it does it more, but it's much more noticeable, especially when you start to get a little bit lighter area, like on the third line, as a matter, is quite a bit lighter than what's around it. Looking at the back of the page, you see that we get no bleeding, no ghosting, no surprises that you could easily write back here. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Diamine Meadow. Here is Jehirban Vert Recita. 
Here is KWZ Pine Green. Here is Robert Oster Forest Green. The next writing sample is done in a composition lab notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is a little lighter than we had with the Clairefontaine. This paper is going to do that this entire time. It doesn't feather, doesn't spread, it does shade. And the best thing here is an ink that would really appeal to some students goes into a student notebook incredibly well and performs very nicely on the page. And we're gonna see that great performance really hold up. I think what we're getting here is quite nice. Looking at the wet fine nib, it is a lot darker than it was with the soft fine. Little lighter than we had on the Claire Fontaine, but not tons lighter noticeably side by side, but still lighter. Just, I think without being side by side, what you see is quite different. It does not feather, it does not spread, does it shade? Yes, it does, to some extent, not hugely, but look at the word replied on the third line. You see it in Bilbo, you see it in remembering. It's there, it's not there a ton. We still mostly get the much darker tone. Looking at the medium nib, it is close to the tone we had on the Clairefontaine, a little bit lighter, a little more muted, still a very nice green that we're getting here, really looks good. With no feathering, I'm going to take that back, a tiny bit of feathering, look at the top line, the word C towards the right, you see it on the second E, you see some feathering. But that's the only feathering that I'm seeing on the word C. I'm going to say that that's pretty darn good. Looking at the broad nib, it is a little bit darker than we had with the medium on this paper, a little bit lighter than we had on the Claire Fontaine. It's not feathering. It's not spreading. I am going to point out that if you look at certain things, like just look at the first word, the letter I. It's got weird areas, and that's really the ink interacting with the graph that's down on the paper. So don't count that against this ink. It does shade a little bit, not tons, little bits. Considering how inexpensively produced this paper is, the ink is doing an amazing job. Looking at the back of the page, you see that we get really no bleeding. Nothing came through and touched the page underneath. We have no ghosting. You can easily write back here. Great for students. While it's nice to see color comparables, I prefer to see an ink that complements the color on the page. Here is an orange ink by Diatramentis Michelangelo Ochre Yellow. Here is a purple ink by KWZ Brown Pink. Here is a black ink by Montagrappa Black. Here is a red ink by Robert Oster Rubine. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is darker than we had on the Claire Fontaine. It does feather some. You see it, the feathering that occurs is really under control. It's totally manageable, but it is feathering. I'm not gonna destroy it. It is copy paper, which is horrible to use with fountain pens. Does it spread a little bit in some of the downstrokes as if it was a flexi nib? You see it spread a little bit when you go back over some areas and don't hesitate while you're writing. Shading, yes, a little bit, which makes me a little worried because it's copy paper. Shading makes me feel like it may be bleeding.
looking at the wet fine nib. It is darker than we had with the Clairefontaine, which is naturally a whole lot darker than we had with the soft fine nib on this paper. Does it feather? Yes. Does it spread? Yes. Would I use it? No. Does it shade? No. Does it make marks on the paper? Yes, you could use it if you wanted to. I just think you would be wasting this ink on this paper. Looking at the medium nib, it is a little bit darker than we had on the Clairefontaine, quite a bit lighter than the Wet Fine. Does it feather a little bit? You see it in they and in sound and in much and in, it's, it's everywhere, but it's really tiny. I would actually just call it manageable. It's also spreading. Also, I would call it manageable. It is not shading. And I'm going to say that is a good thing when we deal with 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the broad nib, it is quite a bit lighter than we had on the Clairefontaine. Little bit darker than we have with the medium nib on this paper. It does feather a little bit, not out of control though. It does spread a little bit, not out of control. It doesn't make, you, doesn't make it look like you're writing with a marker. It doesn't shade, which I'm going to again call as a good thing on copy paper because shading usually I get to see bleeding occur. Looking at the page underneath, you see spots where I did circle. It did bleed and touch the page, but the circles are much larger than the dots. You could probably do that and use the next page without any kind of a problem. But the back of the page, I do not think you could use the back of the page. A lot of ghosting going on here. The ink is deep into the paper, so you only get one-sided use. So what nib and pen do I think are going to give the best writing experience with this ink? The paper I'm using here is yellow Rhodia paper. This green really is a dealer's choice depending on how open you are to different tones. So it's really about being able to say what tone of green would I like to get. Now, again, it goes from very light to quite dark. For me, this is best from a medium flow, medium nib. It gives a great, truly great tone. It gives nice touches of shading and is just in general pleasant to look at on the page. Always especially a good thing. This is the end and thanks for watching.